answered us. How did this world become into the position that it is in, full of evil, if the pit has not been opened? And if the pit here is opened future, what on earth are you talking about? Because the evil is already in this world. Is this world a pit? Has the devil got to come along with a physical key to a physical world and open a pit somewhere? Oh, man. The devils have been let loose. Therefore, the bottomless pit has been let loose. And it used to be in times past that when serious wickedness was seen, people would turn around and say, that's from the pit. That's from the pit. Hmm? As we say, we could go on and on. But you tell me where evil and woes and sadness and sorrow, hmm? death and hell, hmm? and hunger, where does it come from if it's not here in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ described to us? Where does it come from if it's future? We know it's not future. Hell, death and hunger is not going to ride forth in the future. It's already riding forth. There's no point in it being run over riding forth a second time if it's already present like evil is already present answer us <sighs> answer us if you can all right if you can please answer us hmm? and lastly okay Tell us this. Tell me this. Why is it that your teachers, whom you deny, have taught you that this is future? Okay, we expect that. Don't treat us as ignorant. <laughs> don't come to us. Please don't continue to come to us and try and pull the wool over our eyes. We're not that type of sheep. Right? We know because we studied. To show ourselves approved unto God in the scriptures, as well as in history, as well as in our professional life, our jobs that we go to each day, okay? To be good people, to study, to be good workmen in all areas of life, even within our thoughts, intellect, critical thinking. And speech. We work at it. Okay. Now the thing is, ask your teachers where's the doctrine of Christ? They won't have a clue. Not a clue. He that transgresseth and abideth not one and the same thing in the doctrine of Christ have not God. They have no doctrine of Christ to be brought to the scriptures of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. No doctrine. It's all man's doctrine. And so, equally, they cannot speak as the oracles of God. If any man speak, let him speak, says Peter, as the oracles of God. Your teachers can't, and so therefore you can't. You reflect them. And all you can say, well, this, this is going to happen here, this is going to happen there, this is blah, 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 blah. Where's the doctrine? Where's the doctrine? Hmm? You have to have doctrine. 
the doctrine of Jesus Christ in order to understand. To have the book of the Revelation revealed to you. And equally to see the metaphorical terms that it is written in. And the history behind it all. It's a different world. Hence, John goes into a different world. What your teachers are doing is bringing John here down to chapter 3. In a sense of a lower plane to be seen. He sees in chapter 1 to chapter 3, he's dealing with the churches. He's dealing with the metaphor. Equally, he's dealing with the doctrine. But it's on a, a lower plane, like a second heaven. But in chapter 4, he's in the third heaven. Hmm? I think that's the best way to illustrate it, for want of a, a better metaphor. Hmm? Chapter 4, for instance, we begin. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Well, the door, of course, is Jesus Christ. Okay. And the f first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. So he's going higher. You're bringing him down. You, in fact, are bringing him down to such a level that it is carnal. You've got to rise up with John to be on the same plane as John. Hmm? I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Okay? Oh, you say here after here, future. You've just done a carnal interpretation of the book of the Revelation. You've just blinkered yourself into hereafter. Things hereafter, yeah. Things hereafter. Hereafter, the church after you've. After you've given the word of God to these churches hereafter, these things that come hereafter, okay, which must be hereafter. In other words, explained to you after you've dealt with the churches. Come up higher. And what is hereafter is the mind of God. Hmm? I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Hereafter all this. That's all it is. Hereafter all this. Has laid now to one side. Not the hereafter future. All right, in the context that you're thinking of future, and it's quite normal. When we hear hereafter, we think of future. But it's laid in the context of coming from the churches, leaving the churches behind. Equally, hereafter, okay, John is up here in the third heaven. Here after he is seeing. Once he goes there. The mind of God. Opened up. And where. Does the mind of God begin. With the book of the Revelation. Hmm? Well, it's a piece here and it's a piece there. 
and a piece over here. It seems to be all jumbled up, but within the pieces, the beginning of the creation is seen. Where Adam, in fact, and Eve stood. And from then on, hereafter, flows through time to the end of time. You see, he's reading, although it's been narrated to John, the mind of God with pictures that are in the mind of God of what has been from the foundation of the world to the end of the world, here, after. That's what I'm trying to get across. It's here, after. When it goes into the mind of God within the third heaven, the mind of God being illustrated to him, not literally, but on a higher plane than we are at the present. John is seeing things from the beginning and flows on. And that is hereafter. He starts at number one and flows through. And as we say, the scriptures are there, various chapters that clearly are set for us to search them out because they are separated so that some of the chapters do not actually follow on from other chapters they go backwards and forwards backwards and forwards search the scriptures hmm? that's what we're being told search the scriptures if it was that one chapter continuously followed another and another and another and another we'd be get lazy We'd be lazy. It's challenging us. It's exercising our understanding. That's what the whole purpose is of dividing the scriptures, the, the book of the Revelation, the ultimate book, the way it does. Hmm? That we might become strong in our understanding. Simple as that. As Paul says to the Hebrews concerning that. That strong meat, meat belongeth to them that are what? Of full age. Strong meat to full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Exercised. Have we exercised? Do we continue to exercise our understanding in the scriptures as we should in the world? Exercise, effort, strain, perseverance, not giving up. Hmm? Oh, that's easy, isn't it, to give up? It's easy to go and pick up a commentary. And especially these days, all this falsehood around. All these false prophets amassing around the camp eh, of the saints along with political governments and the politicised public eh, pressing in others all their secularism hmm no, we've got to persevere. We've got to persevere. So when, when we see read of one chapter in the book of the Revelation, carnally, we would think, well, the next one will follow on. Well, sometimes it does. But then again, it, it breaks. We can have one chapter, chapter 9 to chapter 10, and then it starts to break. And then back to normal. Then breaks. It's exercising us. Exercising us that we don't become lazy. Hmm? Rest upon our 
Lysis, uh, Lovells. But please tell me where the doctrine is. Mr. M. Time Prophets, where's the doctrine of Christ in all this scripture? Where is all this evil come from that is present in this world if it's still locked up? And if woes and sorrows and sighing and all the rest of it, hunger, famine and thirst, is not with us but it's future, where the heck does it all come from now? Ay, vey, ay, vey, ay, vey. Hey? I mean, we could turn to any, any chapter, any chapter, and ask you, where does this come from? Hmm? Where does it come from? Hmm? Chapter 14, lo, I behold a lamb. <laughs> I looked and behold a lamb stood on Mount Zion, isn't it? Hey, absolutely crackers. And you take all this lot as literal future. It's going to be a lamb standing on Mount Zion. And there are going to be people in chapter 7, uh, chapter seven verse 14. These are they that came, came through great tribulation. Oh, there's going to be tribulation! And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, God. Eh? So great tribulation is going to make for salvation. Not Jesus Christ. Because these are they that came out of great tribulation. You say this is going to be a great tribulation of the world. Well, they're going to be saved then, aren't they? Because they've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And they serve, in verse 15, God day and night in his temple. And who is the temple of God? Well, it's a brick building. Oh, God. <laughs> the temple of God is Jesus Christ, whom your doctrine denies. You can't have universal salvation in the end. Can you? Because that's what you're saying. The church has been whipped up in, in a rapture and then left behind. There's this great tribulation of which the entire world is going to be saved. And you say, oh, it's, it's going to afflict the world and it's going to torment the world and the world's going to be this and that and the other. But it's not, it's going to be saved. These are they that came out of great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they serve God day and night in his temple. That's the word of God. <laughs> Don't you ever think for yourselves Or is it simply that you're not born again? Ask yourself. It's a very, very serious question. Examine yourselves to see if you be in God. <sighs> really? Okay, let's look at chapter 4. Again, these things hereafter begin with John at the beginning of time, with Adam and Eve. Okay. And I looked and behold, the door was opened in heaven. Jesus Christ in heaven is the door. It's not upon earth. So we're not dealing again with earth. We're dealing with heaven. And heavenly things and doctrine. Jesus Christ is the door. He is opened. He is opened to a new dispensation. The door at one stage was closed for a moment. A moment in time at Calvary. But once the victor came forth. Jesus Christ the righteous, the captain of salvation, riding forth and conquering and to conquer. Okay. Right. Then the door was again opened as he ascended into heaven. Hmm? 
I put on the breastplate and all the armour of God. That's why he did it. Hmm? And rode forth. <sighs> okay. And so it was that he obtained the victory. Jesus Christ obtained it all. Now then, after this I looked and behold a door which was opened in heaven and the first voice, first voice, who is the first voice of heaven but Jesus Christ? Hear ye him, not hear Moses, not hear the angels, the first voice to be heard of all is Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Christ. The first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet. He was loud, distinctive, clear, not like tinkling cymbals, clear, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. The mediator between man and God is here, bringing up by the Spirit of God. John into this third heaven. And immediately, verse 2, I was in the Spirit. Are you end time prophets in the Spirit? No. You haven't got the Spirit of God. 